DeepSeek v3.1 just destroyed expectations, 685 billion parameters, a 128,000 token context window, and a benchmark score that beat Claude Opus 4 while running 68 times cheaper. It dropped on Hugging Face with zero warning, and within hours, the AI world realized this open source release was going head to head with GPT-5. The release caught people off guard, not because of marketing or hype, but because of raw numbers. A 71.6% score on the Ader programming benchmark instantly spread across the community. Claude Opus 4 had been sitting at the top of those rankings, yet here was an open model edging past it. The shock did not stop there. Developers testing it quickly realized the same coding task that cost $70 on a closed system could now be done for just about $1 for enterprises or startups running thousands of tasks daily, that is the kind of gap that changes entire budgets. This model pushes 685 billion parameters while stretching the context window to 128,000 tokens, giving it the capacity to handle massive inputs without slowing down. In Chinese characters, it works out to roughly 100 to 160,000, the equivalent of about one-sixth of A Dream of Red Mansions, one of the country's longest classics. People immediately started stress testing it by throwing huge texts at it, and while the model could realistically manage about one-tenth of something that massive, the results were accurate and fast. Speed was another part of the surprise. Previous reasoning-heavy models often slowed to a crawl when processing complex queries. V3.1 ripped through those same tasks with almost instant responses. Developers noted right away that something had changed under the hood. It was not just scaled up, it was optimized. The architecture explained a lot. DeepSeek had introduced what they are calling a hybrid architecture. Earlier hybrid attempts usually ended in disappointment, with models that tried to do reasoning, chatting, and coding, but ended up mediocre across the board. V3.1, for the first time, makes those roles work together. The separate R1 label for reasoning is gone. Now everything defaults to V3.1. That consolidation means DeepSeek is not fragmenting its models anymore. They have put their bets on one flagship system. Community researchers digging into the weights discovered something else. Four hidden tokens, search begin and search end for real-time search, plus think and end think for internal reasoning. That means v3.1 can think privately before giving you an answer and, if connected, can even fetch information from the web. Those discoveries hinted at features people had been waiting for, native reasoning and native search in one open source package. And the benchmarks kept backing up the excitement. On SVG Bench, which tests visual and structural reasoning, V3.1 ranked just behind GPT-4.1 Mini, far surpassing DeepSeek's earlier R1. On MMLU, the standard test for broad language understanding, it held its own against GPT-5. GPT-5 still performed better on graduate level Q&A and advanced software engineering, but the fact that an open model came this close was a milestone. Even on tricky logical comparisons like 9.11 versus 9.9, .9, V3.1 got it right, showing it was less prone to those classic numerical mistakes. Cost efficiency, though, was what kept making headlines. Andrew Christensen, an AI researcher, pointed out the numbers plainly. 71.6% on Ader, 1% above Claude Opus 4, and 68 times cheaper. That kind of proof hit hard because it was not abstract, it was practical people could calculate exactly how much money this would save them in a real-world workflow. The timing of the launch also could not have been more calculated. OpenAI had just rolled out GPT-5, Anthropic had just released Claude 4. Both were marketed as cutting-edge frontier systems locked behind APIs with premium pricing. DeepSeek chose that exact moment to upload v3.1 quietly, without fanfare, as a free download. The message was clear. While American companies guard their frontier systems like intellectual property, DeepSeek was treating its frontier model as public infrastructure. That approach lines up with China's national strategy. Back in 2020, their 14th five-year plan explicitly favored open source AI. The idea was to accelerate adoption worldwide by giving away powerful models, even if it meant losing short-term profits. And it is working. 
Hugging Face's trending list has been dominated by Chinese releases lately, and V3.1 shot straight into the top five within hours. The developer community reaction was immediate and overwhelming. Hugging Face's own head of product, Victor Mustar, tweeted that open source AI is at its peak, pointing directly at models like this. On Reddit, people noticed that the think button from earlier versions had vanished, outputs were longer and more detailed, and benchmarks looked stronger than expected. Before DeepSeek even published the model card, V3.1 was already trending worldwide. This was not the first time DeepSeek rattled the industry, though. Back in January, when they unveiled the original V3, they revealed that training only cost $5.6 million using about 2,000 slower NVIDIA chips. That was unheard of in a world where people assumed hundreds of millions were required to train frontier systems. The news alone wiped $600 billion off NVIDIA's market cap in a single day. Governments quickly banned the chatbot version of DeepSeek over fears that user data would sit on Chinese servers. With V3.1, things are different. This is not just a chatbot, it is an open model released to the world. The economics here are brutal for competitors. Traditional AI development is built on massive investment, data centers, research talent, compliance, and those costs have to be recouped through high API fees. DeepSeek flipped that model upside down. By giving away advanced capabilities, they accelerate adoption while forcing closed competitors to justify their prices. It is the same dynamic we saw with open source software like Linux. Once the free version is good enough, the paid option looks less appealing. There are, of course, practical limits. The full model is around 700 gigabytes, which means most people will not run it locally. But cloud providers are already preparing hosted versions, which removes that barrier almost immediately. Enterprises will soon be asking themselves a simple question. Why pay premium rates for closed models when a frontier level open one is sitting there waiting to be deployed? DeepSeek's official community has already exploded past 80,000 members, and that momentum is not slowing. Researchers like TerraTaxes had been saying for a while that DeepSeek would eventually collapse its separate model lines into a single product. With V3.1, that prediction has come true. And the impact goes beyond benchmarks. For the first time, smaller teams are proving they can compete at the frontier without spending hundreds of millions. The myth that only the largest United States labs can build these systems is breaking down. Countries, companies, even individual developers now have access to tools that can rival the best in the world. For American firms, that means exclusivity is gone. If open source models match performance and cost a fraction to run, the value of closed systems has to come from something else, maybe integrations, trust, or enterprise partnerships. And there is a certain irony in the name artificial intelligence. For years, what was artificial was not the intelligence, it was the scarcity. Access to these systems was locked behind corporate paywalls and geopolitical restrictions. DeepSeek just proved those walls were not necessary. By releasing V3.1 openly, they have shown that frontier intelligence can be shared without artificial barriers. So when people call this release disruptive, it is not exaggeration. 685 billion parameters, 128,000 tokens of context, benchmark scores beating Claude Opus 4, and costs that make closed models look outdated, all dropped online without warning. DeepSeek basically reset expectations for what open source AI can be, and if this is only the path toward V4, the real shockwaves may still be ahead. That is all for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit subscribe if you have not already. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.